this is what Smart Capture does. Here's an option for scroll capture where it's gonna scroll down the screen for me. Hello everybody, Jimmy is Promo here back again with another awesome video. And in today's video, we will be talking about the top features that you cannot live without if you have yourself the Samsung Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus. Now to start the video off, we will be talking about Smart Select. Now Smart Select allows you to select a certain part of a screen that you're able to share it with your friends and family and social media sites. So you don't have to do a full screen shot of the entire screen and then crop it out later. So as example, let's say that we head over into the Yahoo Sports application and you only want to share this little bit of information right here on the final score of the NBA Finals. Now the old way of taking a screenshot is volume down and power and it takes you over, it takes the screenshot, this is where you can go inside of there, you can crop it down, you can kind of get it to where you want it to be. Then you'd be able to hit on the share button, share it across all your family members or social media sites and then you also have your option to save it if you want it to be saved to your phone. So let's just say that you don't want to go through that whole process of cropping and taking a screenshot and it's already saved in your phone already, this is all you have to do. When you pull out your little edge panel right over here, and if for some reason you don't see Smart Select as a edge panel, just head over into your settings and make sure you go through all your panels and you turn on Smart Select. So heading back over to this, let's head over and we're gonna go to the Smart Select. We're gonna click on the rectangle and then just instantly from here, you'd be able to choose what you want to be saved. Once you hit on done, now this is where you'd be able to share it with anybody on Facebook or Twitter or a text message and you also have the option to save. Now the thing I love about Smart Select is that once you hit on share and you share it wherever you want it to go, um, it is not automatically saved in your phone. You don't need to keep on clutter cluttering your gallery with all these different screenshots when all you really want to do is just post it on the internet and then move on. Now the great thing is once you do share this thing and you're all completely done with doing this little smart select, just hit on the back button just a couple times and you're right back to where you were. And that little image that you shared everywhere across the internet, uh, it is not stored in your phone unless if you want it to be. So now we're gonna head over into the camera and we're gonna talk about live focus. Now in this video here, I went outside and I took a picture of a Lego person. And there's a couple of things I want you to notice in this video. First off on the very bottom of the screen, there is two different squares. If you have it selected and it's highlighted yellow, you have dual capture on. That means it takes two types of images. One that is close up of the image or subject you're taking a picture of where the background is blurred. The other image that will be stored is a wide angle shot, which I'll show you that here in a second. Also, you can change the blur background with that little line that is right there. So if you wanna add just a little bit more background blur of exactly what it'll look like, um, you can either change it now or you can do it after the image has been taken. Now the very last and most important thing is where it says live focus ready. That is that little yellow portion above that background blur line that once it uh, highlights yellow, it is ready to go for live focus. If it is not highlighted yellow, it means it is not ready. So now let's move over to the phone where we just got done taking that image. And on the very bottom where this is just stored here in the gallery, you can adjust the background blur. So it's a big deal that you're able to do this not only before you take the picture, but you can even do it after the picture has already been taken. So if you want everything to be in focus, you can bring it all the way down. If you want it to kind of look like a DSLR image, you'd be able to have it all the way up. And this right here, you want to make sure your subject is close to your camera with the background far enough away to actually create that depth. Now, when we talked about the dual capture option, this right here is the option of close up. If you wanted to see the wide angle shot, you can also see the wide angle shot. And let's say that you do wanna have this one also stored as its own image on the very top right hand side, you can save this file as a new file. So a lot of times most people will keep up this little uh, close up image because it just looks fantastic as if it was done with something with a amazing lens. So the next feature that you cannot live without is if you're somebody who uses your phone in the horizontal mode. So if you're watching a lot of YouTube and it's kind of sideways like this and you're watching all your different videos or you're playing with an application and it's sideways, you want to make sure that you have this option here to where your home screens also goes into the portrait and landscape mode. Now to have this thing turned on, what you want to do is you can do a little pinch to zoom on any one of those screens. You're going to head over to where it says the home screen settings and you want to turn this option off right here. So or where it says the portrait mode only, this is talking about your home screens. So this just makes it super easy to where when you are inside of your YouTube uh, little application and you're watching all your different videos, when you hit on your home button, you're already in landscape mode. So where you'd be able to head over into any of the other applications. So then you'd be able to just go on with your day without having to go back and forth and back and forth between all the different applications that you are using.
Now the next feature is a pretty big one to talk about with the Galaxy S9 and the S9 Plus because this was the phone that they introduced, the stereo sound that was made by Dolby Atmos. Now if you're going through all your different icons on the very top and you don't have this thing selected or if it's not in the blue tint, you want to make sure you turn this one on so you are listening to the Dolby Atmos that is made for either movie, music, or voice and you can also have it on auto. Now if when you pull down your notifications panel twice and you don't see Dolby Atmos that is sitting right there, it could be on the second page. And if it's not even there for some weird reason, it could also be underneath your button order on the very bottom where it's one of those that you might not use all the time. So if you accidentally moved it, this is where it could be located to where you'd be able to basically just move it right on up over so you'd be able to turn it on or off or just switch if you're watching a movie or if you're listening to music. Now this next feature is for your viewing experience of YouTube. So if you remember back in the day, you're able to do a little crop to zoom or crop to fit because on the left hand side of this little video here and the right hand side, you can see there's quite a bit of black space. Now there's a lot of screen that can still be used. And so that little crop to fit was amazing back in the day. All you'd have to do is do a little pinch to zoom. And then now you are right back to where you were using the full real estate of that screen of the phone you just purchased. Now, again, you'll notice that some of the zoom will take a little bit away from the video but if you're watching a video and it doesn't really take too much off of it you might as well stay in the zoomed format so in this way you're getting a bigger more full experience now the next feature we're going to talk about is multi-window now when it comes down to multi-window that means that you have two different apps running at the exact same time but before we go over and talk about that one i want you to make a change on your phone first i want you to go over inside of your settings and you're going to go down to where it says the advanced features underneath advanced features you have the option here for multi-window and within multi-window, turn on this option here for recents button. The only reason is because it makes things so much easier. So let's say that we head over into YouTube and we're watching YouTube and then somebody shoots us over a text message. So you'd be able to press and hold on your recent button, head over inside of your text messaging app. You'd be able to respond back with them um, with whatever you know words or whatever you gotta say to them. And then you'd be able to send it on back and you can still watch your YouTube video on the very top. So you're not gonna be missing out on something big that's happening here just by talking to somebody else down here and then when you're done you press and hold on your recents so that makes it super easy so then if you're watching your your video up here somebody messages you back again you just open it right back up you talk to them back you respond back through your messaging application and boom now you're right on back to your video so let's take this recent app button just one step further let's say that you are on youtube you're watching your video someone shoots you a text message you don't really care to have multi windows going on with the recent app button if you just double tap it it takes you right back to the last uh uh, application that you just got done using. So you'd be able to respond back to this person, double tap really fast. Now you're right back over into YouTube. You're watching your video again, about 30 seconds passes. They respond back to you, double tap, boom, you're right back over inside your text messages, send it back over to them. And now you're right back over into your video. So sometimes that might be an easier or faster way of doing a multi window is actually just by not even doing multi at all, just going right back and forth by switching between your recent apps. So now let's talk about Bixby because Bixby is a pretty big part of Samsung these days. And there's actually a dedicated button. Let's say that you don't want to have this Bixby button that is opening up your, your Bixby home. You are able to actually turn this off by hitting the settings button and you can turn off that Bixby key. Now, when you turn off the Bixby key, it does not take you over to the Bixby home, but it does still allow you to do a press and hold where you can give this thing its commands, where you can change the, 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 the display. You can send somebody a phone call, send somebody a text message, do whatever, because Bixby is actually actually extremely useful when you actually start using it. Now, if you don't want to have the option of Bixby Home over here at all, you can also turn this thing off. But I also have another video that talks fully about Bixby on either turning it on, turning it off, fully disabling it, or even rerouting and changing the Bixby button to open up something completely different. So this next feature is actually a two in one, and this is where you do want to turn on two different settings inside of the advanced features. So to do that, pull on your notifications panel, click on settings, and then you can go inside of your advanced features. And what you first want to turn on is smart cap. Capture. Smart Capture unlocks more things you're able to do when you take a screenshot with your phone. One of them is actually capturing hidden areas of the screen, which means it just simply scrolls down the screen for you. And the next one to turn on is the Direct Share. Direct Share allows you to send an image or a screenshot to the most frequently used applications or contacts. So in this way, you don't have to keep on searching for everybody. It's usually just right there in the very top when you hit on that share icon. Now, as example, this screen here has so many different screens I would have to 
to take a screenshot of if I want to send you the whole thing. So if you were to take a screenshot, this is what Smart Capture does. Here's an option for scroll capture where it's gonna scroll down the screen for me so this way I can send you one image of everything I want to send you instead of doing three or two different screenshots. Now when you hit on the share button, it'll pop up your most rec recently used applications along with your contacts. Now the very last feature, we'll be talking about the maximum power saving mode. Now this has saved me multiple times. You know, I wasn't gonna be home or charging my phone for an additional four more hours, but I only had one hour left on battery life. And I wanted to make sure I had enough battery in case of any emergency pops up where I had to make a phone call. So if you don't wanna turn your phone off, just put this thing in maximum power saving mode and it'll probably turn that one hour left into that four or five hours that you actually truly need. And then it'll definitely save your butt. And then whenever you're done, you just basically turn this thing off and it puts it right back over into your main default setting of the phone and you're already charging your phone and you're home safe. Now I hope that you guys have liked this video. If you guys did, make sure you just give this thing a huge thumbs up. Also, don't forget to hit on subscribe if you have not subscribed already. Make sure you turn on that notification bell so you get notified of all my future videos and share this video with your friends and family and social media sites. And outside of that, I'll see you guys later.